Luke 23, chapter 23, verse 33 and on. When they came to the place called the Skull, there they crucified him, along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, He saved others. Let him save himself. He is the Christ of God, the chosen one. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was, written, there was a written notice above him which read, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hanged there hurled insults on him. Are you that Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God? He said, since you are under the same sentence, we are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, I will tell you the truth, or in the Greek, Amen, Amen. Surely, surely, today you will be with me in paradise. This is the word of the Lord. Kings, usually when we think of kings, actually my son the other day asked me, when I, he saw a $5 note, and he asked me, who's that? And I also, I almost went like, what? Well, he's nine. <laughs> but he asked me, who's that? And I said, she's the queen. <laughs> she's Queen Elizabeth II. She's the queen of Australia. And he, well, now that the, that the governor general saying that she wants um, Australia to become a republic, I think this is going to get more momentum now. My dad, um, he was not Republican. He liked things, he likes things the way they, they were. And, um, and he said, oh, I don't, want, I don't want to change the system. I wonder how, where you stand. Maybe you have a link with England or, and you don't want to change the system. Some young people want to change the system. Remember, like 22 years ago, they wanted to change the flag as well. So people want to change everything. But when you think about kings, you think of people who have a great crown and something on the right. And this thing on the... Uh, no, uh, actually, yeah, something. The, how do you call the thing? The, the, the spectrum on the... Yeah, on the right, and, and remember, and Queen Elizabeth had the whole war on the le on the right, and, and they had like a, the whole war with a cross on top, and that's how she's the queen, and, and the archbishop, the archbishop, puts the crown on the on the queen or king, and that's how God says that they are who they are. That, that, that that's the whole thing behind it. God is the the bishop or the archbishop of Canterbury is the representative of God. And therefore, he is the one who puts the crown on top of the queen or king, and then they're the rightful rulers of England. And actually, the queen and the rulers of England are the most famous uh, of, of, um, of kings. The most famous, they get the more... Um, I remember when Diana was... Uh, she married Prince Charles. I still remember the wedding. And I was in El Salvador. And I didn't understand what they were saying, but everybody in Latin America were watching <laughs> the big event. So kings and queens are a big thing. But how about the king of the Jews? The king of the Jews, in Psalm chapter 2, he is called the son of God. This is my son. Psalms 2 says. And remember when Jesus was 
are baptized, what did the voice from heaven say? This is my son. So he was king. Jesus was king. But who put the crown on Jesus' head? He wasn't the high priest, like he was the norm in also in Israel. What happened when the, when the king came to Israel, when the boy became a king, when his dad died, or what happened, whatever happened, whatever way he came to be a king, the high priest would come and read the law. And he would bless the king with oil and anoint him. And, the, and usually the prophet was there too. Saying, yes, this is the rightful king. Remember when Solomon was anointed? The high priest was there. The prophet was there. Every, all the God's representatives were there. So that's how you anoint a king. I mean... When pharaohs, when pharaohs became pharaohs, I mean, they were the best. I mean, they had a big ceremony. When, when Caesars, when uh, somebody came to be Caesar, king or emperor, they had a big feast. But, how, but how, how about Jesus? When Jesus became, when he, when he received a crown, who put it? Who put the crown on Jesus' head? He wasn't the high priest. He wasn't the prophet. He, he was a Roman or Roman uh, Ro Roman soldiers mocking him, mocking him. That's how our king got his crown. See how a reversal it is of story. Somebody who we don't know his name. Put a crown on Jesus' head because he was the king of the Jews. In heaven we'll know who he was, but this individual soldiers was putting a, a, the rightful crown of thorns on top of the king of kings and lord of lords. And he thought he was mocking him, but he was really doing what Jesus deserved to be put a crown on his head. And they, were, they thought they were mocking him. They were, thought they were making fun of this, another wannabe Messiah, because he wasn't the first Messiah in Roman times. And he wasn't the first, and he wasn't the last. The last was, the last was uh, Simeon Bar Kokhba in the year 132. He made another revolt. Remember, there was a revolt in the year 70 when they destroyed Jerusalem. They destroyed the temple, but then there was another guy in the year 132, Simeon Bar Kokhba. And he said, oh, Simeon Bar Kokhba means son, Simeon, son of the star. And who's the morning star? Jesus. So all these things, all these thoughts about Judah and Judaism regarding the Messiah, they, had it, they, had, they always were going on this, oh yes, we have a Messiah, we're going to have a Messiah. In the year 70, when they destroyed Jerusalem, you know what they did? All the way from Jerusalem, if you know your geography, all the way from Jerusalem, going up in Syria, going to Turkey, all the way to the get, um, all, all the way from, to Greece, and all the way to the get to, um, to uh, Rome, they put crosses. They crucify all the Jewish rebels that they could. 5,000 crosses. So just, let, just imagine <laughs> something happens in Swan Hill and we revolt here and, and, and then some, the king comes and says, okay, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach you not to revolt. I'm going to put all the rebelli uh, rebellious people, men and women and children, all the way to Melbourne. You see crosses all the way to Melbourne. So you're driving up and down the, the, the highway and you're seeing people, um, some of them, some, some people last couple of days on in the, in the cross. They last up to five days. And some members of the family would come and give food to, 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 their, to their loved ones. So they would last a little bit longer. But you don't want to do that because being on the cross, the cross was the 
worst way to die. Is the worst way to die still. Suffering. You're suffocating. But the nails go through here. Not through here. You rip. But through here. The, all the nerve endings. Imagine the, the feet as well. All the nerve endings. All this. And you're running out of, out of air all the time. And you are under the sun. In Israel. Mediterranean. Which is hot. So some people stay there for many, many days and suffering and the crows will come and they love to eat your eyes. That's why you've seen the movie by Mel Gibson. I mean, it shows that the crows come and eat people because that's what happened. And you, there's nothing you can do because your arms are pinned down on, on a piece of wood. That's what Jesus suffered. That's what this king suffered. When he was made known, when, when he was proclaimed to be king, his, his people didn't believe him. I remember when, when I don't know who's going to be the next king of England, either Charles or, uh, not you, Charles, of course. <laughs> Maybe you wish, but, <laughs> but Prince Charles or, or, or William. Who knows? But when that happens, Australia will be in party mode. England will be in party mode. Every single country that, that's happy with England, with the UK, there will, be, there will be celebrations all over the place. And he'll be proclaimed King William or King Charles. And what did Jesus have on his cross? This is the king of the Jews. Um, Inri, in Latin. Inri, this Jesus. Ah, oh, forget what my, my grandma told me this. But he was the king of the Jews. But what sort of king was he? He was a crucified king. The cross meant power. Those who remember World War II, I believe that some of you may remember World War II, when the Americans dropped a bomb on Japan. What did the atomic bomb represent? The most powerful weapon. And whoever has it, rules the earth. What was the most powerful weapon in Roman time? The cross. Because everybody was afraid of dying on a cross. Nobody wanted to die on a cross. Dying on a cross meant that either you were a very high criminal, that you killed people, because Roman citizens were killed by, in a cross, actually. I don't know if you know this, but Roman, Roman citizens weren't killed, um, crucified. They weren't crucified. It, was, it wasn't lawful to be, for them to be crucified. They were, they were decapitated. <laughs> it, was, it was a quick death. That was, that's why we believe the Apostle Paul was decapitated. Wow, because he was a Roman citizen. That's what, remember when they, when they, um, when they um, castigated him, when they, uh, how, how do you say it? When they whipped him. When they whipped him, and he said, is it lawful to whip a Roman citizen? And then the other guy says, Oh, are you a Roman citizen? I pay a lot for my citizenship. And then Paul says, Oh, you paid it. I was born a citizen. <laughs> so, so once you understand all these things, you, the Bible comes into place. Oh, okay. That's why, th 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 that's why Paul was saying that. He had to have a trial. Jesus didn't have a good trial. You know, you, you saw that false people came to witness that he said this, he said that. But because Jesus wasn't a Roman citizen, what did, what did Pilate say? Ah, it's about your own stuff. You slaughter yourself. And then they came back and said, he said he was the king of the Jews. And then Pilate had no choice because there could be no other king than Caesar. 
Rome didn't tolerate. And when Caesar made people kings, like the king of, uh, like, king, like um, Herod the Great, he was king under Caesar's supervision. That's not king at all. Imagine the queen being told by the Americans, oh, you have to follow our, our way of life or else you are not going to be a queen or a king. They wouldn't like it. So the cross was the most powerful weapon. The cross meant two things. Either you're a criminal or you went against Rome. Insurrection. And the way you're going to die is through the cross. That was the most powerful. It, it, it wasn't the most powerful weapon in the sense that, of course, the Romans, they had very good engineering. So actually, if you go to, I don't know, I've never been to, to Europe. <laughs> but if you go to uh, Italy, if anybody has been in Italy, they, they still use the roads. The aqueducts, they still use the aqueducts. They were really good uh, engineers. Cement, they invented cement. And they also invented good tools for war. But dying on a cross was the worst thing. And you don't die wearing clothes. You know, you die naked. The, the theme of the cross was that you were humiliated to the most. And to let everybody know that Rome was in control. That was the meaning of the cross. Rome rules. You don't. But what happened in Christian belief? What was, Jude, what was Jesus doing on the cross? He was saying, Rome does not rule. I'm going to make a new kingdom. And the thing that people fear the most, now people wear it on their chest. Sometimes I put it here on, my, on the pin. Sometimes people wear it here. And sometimes people just use it as a fashion accessory. But in New Testament times, you don't want to talk about the cross. People defecate on the cross. They are, they are there for three days. They defecate on the cross. The bottom of the cross is not full of blood. It's full of blood, but it's full of human waste. Smells bad. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light. I love the song. I'm not, I'm not saying that's a bad pig. But, 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 but does it change once you know what's going on on the cross? It changes a lot. Christian thinking has changed it so much that we have sanitized. The cross. The cross is a beautiful place to be. No, I don't want to be there because that's where it smells of death. On my way back from Melbourne last night, I called Craig and on my way back, we passed near Kangaroo and we had our windows roll up and, but still the stench of death came through and my wife said, it stinks. <laughs> and you know, the Romans didn't take off didn't take off the people from the cross. They left them, them to rot. Just like the kangaroos. <laughs> it was the family members. Or if you were influential. That you could take off someone from the cross after they die. But most people stay up there. To rot. That's horrible. That's horrible. So when they came to a place called Skull, there they crucified him along, along with the criminals. One on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they're doing. So who was in control? The Romans or Jesus forgiving them? The Romans were just, for, for the Roman soldiers, it was just, Part of the job. Ah, another insurrectionist. Another guy who claims to be the Messiah. Ah, let him kill him and he'll be done with him. We don't care about it anymore. And Jesus is there saying, Father, forgive them. 
for they do not know what they're doing. And imagine the Roman soldier saying, what is this guy going on about? Like, we're killing him. Forgiveness has a lot of power, my brothers and sisters. Sometimes it's very hard to forgive, I know. I come from a country where parents have their children killed in front of, their, in front of them. And, you know, our children are the most important thing we have, that God has given us. And somebody killing our children, that person for us doesn't deserve any mercy. I don't know how I'm going to act, that I will be faced with that. I sincerely don't know. I'm not going to say, oh, I'm a pastor, so I'm going to forgive. I'm not going to say that. Because that would be lying. Because I don't know how I'm going to feel. Those people who abuse children. How do we feel about them? Sometimes they're under drugs. Like the guy who was Cayman, if you read the news, the newspaper, the guy who abused this four-year-old girl at Cayman, down in Melbourne, northern suburbs. And he said, oh yes, I'm guilty. At the end, he said he was guilty. And What do we do with somebody like that? Do we forgive them? Because they know what they're doing. But they're so blind by seeing that they just do it. Just like we sometimes are blind by sin and do things. The Roman soldiers knew what they were doing. But Jesus saw beyond what the Roman soldier was doing. What, the, what they knew. What a challenge to us today. To forgive. Because by forgiving, you're saying, I take command of this situation. I'm not going to allow you to, to ruin my life. And they divided to up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood. So they were the soldiers. Now the people. The people stood watching. And if you have ever seen gladiators in, on the movies. You know uh, the, hunting, the hunting games. Yeah, the, the hung, Hunger Games. You seen the Hunger Games? I watch it because I have to see it. Because I have to know what's going on in culture. I do a lot of podcasting and social commentary. But I hate the movie. I hate seeing young kids killing each other. And what I hate most about this movie is that at the end of the day, I don't know, I haven't read the book, I just saw the movie, but at the end of the, this first movie, it never criticizes that what they're doing is wrong. They just take it up as the hunger, hunger game. They don't say it's wrong. It's just a survival thing. I think the, the, at, the, at the end of this first movie, when the two that are left alive, they, they want to kill themselves just not to please the, the people from the game. Like, it was just like a sort of Olympics thing. I believe that the most powerful message there would have been that, the, that the, all the kids that were sent to the Hunger Games, they all refused to kill each other. That would, be, that would have been a better message. A more powerful message. The people still watching. I don't, know if, I don't know why people like watching people die. I watch people die. People crying because they're dying on the footsteps of my house. Please help me. And my mom's saying, don't go out because you're going to be shot. That's the worst thing. Hearing someone, and then you have, to, and when, and when the, and when the thing is over, you have to get out and move the dead person. And... Oh, we love the hunting. The, the, we, we love to watch the, um, the Hunger Games. Well, you never been, <laughs> you never seen blood yourself. That's what I tell my daughter because my daughter loves it. I said, ah, I hate it. I know what is, <laughs> what I know what death smells, what death sounds like. But people. In Roman times, they, they would love to, to watch gladiators kill each other or kill other people. Remember, we Christians, we were sent to the, 
to the Colosseum or to the amphitheater in, in many cities. And the, and the gladiators will come and cut people's feet and they will fall and they will cry and people will go crazy. Yeah! Like in the Hunger Games. That's what happens in the Hunger Games. People will go, yeah, look, how interesting. Look, I, I want to see that, the face of that person when they lose their limb. I want to see the face of fear. Or I want to see if they are strong enough. Is that normal? Is that a normal thing to, to want to see? I don't think so. But people were, were at the cross watching. And the rulers even sneered, him, sneered at him. And they said, he saved others. Let him say himself if he is the Christ of God, the chosen one. So they were making fun of him. Look, he's at the cross. He raised people from the dead. He healed the blind. He healed the lame. Yet, he can save himself. The soldier also came up and mocked him. So, so, so the people mocked him. The, the people, um, the priests mocked him. Then the soldiers mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. So they were saying the same thing that the priests were saying. Messiah means anointed one, and the anointed one is the king. So if you are the king, save yourself. There was a written notice above him which read, This is the king of the Jews. And that wasn't saying that Jesus, they didn't believe that Jesus was the king. They were mocking him. This is your king. Look, he's crucified. He's no one. And to finish. One of the criminals who hung there. Heard insults at him. Aren't you the Christ? Aren't you the anointed one? Aren't you the Messiah? Christ and Messiah are the same thing. Anointed. And who's the anointed one? The king. Save yourself and us. Everybody wants to be saved from what they're going through. And this is where Greg needs to hear the gospel. And not only Greg, but all of us. Because all of us are going through, through strife, and sometimes it's life and death. And sometimes people can say, isn't your God so powerful that he can heal you? Or save you? In Syria or in Korea, isn't God so powerful that He can save your life? And sometimes the most powerful witness that we can give to those people who are asking us or mocking us is to stay faithful till death. That's the most powerful thing that we can do. Aren't you Christ? Save yourself and us. But the criminal, but the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God? He said, since you are under the same sentence, we are punished justly for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Sometimes we are the other criminal. Lord, save me, save me. Me, your son, your child, your daughter. I don't, I don't deserve to be going through this. And what does the Bible say in Romans chapter 2? All have sinned. And all are destituted from the presence of the Lord. All deserve death. So the one who didn't deserve death was dying on the cross. And we need to be on the cross. Because we are the sinners. We are the ones who mock God when we sin. When we don't do what he expects us to do. Then he said to Jesus. Jesus. No. Then he said. <laughs> Jesus. He didn't call him king. He didn't call him anointed. He called him Jesus. And Jesus means. Savior. Jesus, remember me 
when you come in your kingdom. And when you ask for prayer for Greg, this is what came into my mind. Jesus answered him, I've told you the truth. Today, you will be with me in paradise. He didn't save him from his pain. He didn't save him from the cross. But he gave him a greater promise. The promise of paradise. If you want your best life now, which is a um, title of a book, <laughs> if you want your best life now, yeah, I, I believe that you can have a good life. But if your aim in life is having a king that gives you the best life now, now on this earth, you totally miss the plot. I'm not saying that God wants you to suffer and be suffering. But what I'm saying is that if that's your Christ, if that's your Messiah, if that's your King, you're just one of those mockers, one of the high priests, you're one of the soldiers, you're the one of the, uh, of the criminals beside Jesus. But the other one said, King? No, he didn't say that. Messiah? No, he didn't say that. Christ, no, he didn't say that. He just went, Jesus, Savior, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Let us ask God to be our Savior all the time. Let us ask Jesus to be our Savior all the time. And let us believe his promise that we will be with him. No matter what happens to us, we will be with him in paradise and also in the resurrection. Let us pray.